By 2006, Jamie McMurray was viewed as a potential star in NASCAR. Having won a race in just his second career start, he was signed to drive full-time for Jip Ganassi Racing in 2003. Despite some of his solid runs, he missed the chase in 2004 and 2005 and was set to become a free agent. At the same time, while Roush Racing is having its best season in the Cup Series, they were also about to go through some changes. After five seasons in winning a Cup Series championship, Kurt Busch was about to part ways. While he would end up going over to drive for Roger Penske in the Blue Deuce, Jamie McMurray was set to be his replacement starting in 2006. Considering he barely missed the chase the past two seasons and Kurt Busch's old team pretty much staying intact, expectations were high on Jamie McMurray entering the 2006 season. But after the first quarter of the season, talks of making the chase quickly dwindled away. By the end of the first quarter, McMurray would have to go through a crew chief change involving Jimmy Finning and Bob Osborne, and twice during the stretch found himself outside of the top 20 in points. Here comes Jamie McMurray, gets in the back of him and turns him in the wall. And that's what shredded the tires. Well, I think Gordon took the left side of his car off. I was off the gas and on the brake and it just kept going. I couldn't help it. I go tell him I'm sorry. I think he had to check up real bad because, I mean, I was all the way out of the gas when I, when I hit him. I don't know if he had to let up. I just, I had a run and I let off and I just couldn't, I couldn't roll down anymore. And I did, I was getting picked up in the back, it felt like. And of course, that 26 car last year had a 97 on it and was driven by Kurt Busch. We had a shot at winning this race, and Rogers won the. Um, oh, it's too bad I'm watching TV right now. <laughs> but uh, Rogers won the Indy race 13 times, and uh, we were really going to do it today, but came up just a bit short. That was Kurt, just. Thank a, you very much, Kurt. Out of the 500, and so is the car that got tangled up with it. Kurt didn't really seem sincere to me when he sounded said a little that. sarcastic. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, thanks, Dave. Appreciate you going back there and getting that. Jeff Burton going up trying to block the 26. They both get in the outside retaining wall, and McMurray loses it and does get into Bobby Labonte in the 43. And then Bobby hits the wall. Yeah. And Denny Hamlin runs in the back of the 31. Maybe not too badly. Yeah, I think Hamlin will be okay. Boy, that 26 is hurt. Looks like the real loser on this deal is going to be Jamie McMurray in that 26 car. Boy, I'll say. Look at that thing. Common denominator, Brent Sherman. Whoa. 41 car looks like he may have knocked uh, got into the back of the 12. Then when he checked up that's when McMurray in the 26 really got in the back of 41 hard Reed Sorensen picked the rear wheels up off the ground. Sherman turned mirrors. More cars spin to the inside of the racetrack. You know we, we, we tried kind of with the 17 the 16 all the other guys are doing and um, I brushed the wall a little bit. We thought maybe we knocked something loose, but I don't know. It's just been a really tough weekend for us. And and, uh, and I told him, I said, I'm getting ready to kill myself. I, you know, I'm running like a second or two seconds off the pace, and I'm getting ready to spin out. So, you know, he brought it in. They put the lasers on the rear end just to make sure everything's lined up. And they're going to put a gear in it. We've already tried a gear, but, you know, you're just, uh, when you have weekends like that, it's hard to find the, the answer to your problem. And we're just, we're having a bad weekend. Let's see if we can get a replay here. Jamie McMurray. Oh, there you go, man. I looked up my saw him. I said he was going to wreck. I think he probably said the same. Did we have that good hands thing yet? <laughs> <laughs> There's a prime candidate a for it. Mark that one down. <laughs> We're going to have a lot of candidates for that one tonight. Nice save. Yeah. Boy, Mark got such a good run. He got. Oh, you no. You can see that coming right oh. there. I don't know if he touched it, but he made that kind of run like that. Looks like what happened here last year when Tony Stewart got a big run off of a turn four. Got to the back. Oh, he got a flat left front, bud. Jamie McMurray has had such a heartbreak of a season. Yeah, trying he's... to get things going with his new team, Roush Racing, a change of crew chiefs. They're trying to get all the cars like the ones uh, that Bob Osborne had with Carl Edwards and had so much success with. And they came in here. Another driver that yesterday having trouble finding the handling of the car and tonight, well, this is a little different. But Daryl, you're running this fast. When you run up behind somebody like that and bump them, it definitely did get into yeah. it, but you could almost start to see the car get a little bit loose right there when you run up on him that fast. Jamie McMurray, the 26 car involved in that early crash coming off turn four. He had stayed on the lead lap and look at this Look car at Jeremy now. Mayfield's car. How does McMurray even see where to go? It's loose right there, and here he comes into Mark, and they both go in the wall, and 
nowhere for Mark to go. And they start stacking up behind him. You see Biffle and Kyle Busch getting together. There you see McMurray uh, in Mayfield. Tony had it missed and got tagged. Yeah, he got hit from behind by Jeremy, Jeremy. Mayfield. And he got hit really hard. After seven races sitting 21st in the point standings, Bob Osborne was brought in to improve performance. And right away, you began to see improvement. In just their second race together, McMurray was leading some laps at Talladega, competing for the win with less than five laps to go. Although he went on to score his first top five, that run paled in comparison to what went on at Dover. After running in the midfield for most of the race with less than 100 laps to go, McMurray and Osborne decided to stay out for track position. The move paid off, as McMurray led most of that final 100 lap stint, totaling to 95 laps led. Not bad when you were running in the midfield for most of the race. However, his teammate Matt Kenseth would eventually catch back up, passing him for the lead with three laps to go and going on to win. It was after this race that some fans were thinking this team was onto something. Perhaps there was a late season turnaround in the works. There was to an extent. McMurray's best stretch of the season took place during the summertime races. While still being inconsistent at times, he still put that car as high as 14th in the standings while also nearly winning at Watkins Glen. If he was able to keep up some of these runs for the rest of the season, you wouldn't see a Bad Seasons video on him. However, the reason he is getting a Bad Seasons video is not only the way it started, but also the way it finished. I don't know, I, I saw the 15 get underneath um, the 07, and uh, I don't know, I just, the 07 got turned around, and then you're just kind of along for the ride, um, so unfortunate. No trouble, already one lap into it. Denny Hamlin goes around, Jamie McMurray goes around. Denny, oh man, Denny Hamlin got turned by the 49 car of Mike Bliss, whom Bliss goes head on in the wall. Doug was just over here. We think maybe it's a valve or something. They're not sure, but Greg's kind of complained about the same thing I did. So probably the same part in the engine. All right, and Doug Gates was over here. He did evaluate the engine best he could, but the uh, initial diagnosis is same thing that happened to Greg Biffle, happened to Jamie McMurray, a valve train problem. People are going to get tired of talking to you, Marty. World renowned Jamie McMurray. Well, we know, we know who hit him. Lee heads for pit road. Say we need to get tires on it. Get four tires on it. Fix the front fender. Jabble, you stay back. And there's McMurray's car just in front of Gordon heading down pit road. Sun doesn't have anything to do with the BP. They're already in the shade there for quite a while. But the sun is over turn two right now. Davo? Dave yeah, well, actually, I just talked with Bob Osborne, crew chief for Jamie McMurray. We had a quick conversation while he headed back to the garage, and he said the sun was in Jamie's eyes. That's what began things, but that's as far as we got, and obviously we don't have anything definitive yet on replay. And here comes Jimmy Johnson. He's going to close the gap on Harvick. Trouble. We got contact. McMurray, Kyle Busch. Oh, man. Brian Evans Newman. goes around, but I don't think he makes contact. Dale Jarrett's around. But, uh, McMurray got clobbered. And that's such a shame. He had... He finally had a decent run going. <laughs> yeah. His 2006 season stats are this. Zero wins, three top fives, seven top tens, an average finish of 23.6, and seven DNFs while finishing 25th in points. While McMurray didn't live up to the hype of driving for Roush Racing, it wasn't a total failure. He ended up scoring his first win with the team a season later at Daytona, but in his four seasons there, his best points finish would end up being 16th. His final season driving for Roush in 2009 also included his second win for them, that being in the fall Talladega race. While McMurray's time at Roush didn't exactly pan out, little did we know he was on to bigger and better things. In a way, him winning the Daytona 500 and Brickyard 400 in the same year made us forget about his time over at Roush Racing a bit. The 2006 season showcased Jamie McMurray's career in a nutshell. Inconsistent, but at times, can compete for wins. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.